Ready, set, go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the October 6th Public Health and Safety Committee. We're going to start with roll call, Pledge of Allegiance for Brooks. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, 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 Pledge of Allegiance first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, Karen. I'd like to say the pledge before we start. I know. I threw my own stuff off. Thank you. Gould? Here. Stavish and Tron. Collins is absent. Ferry? Here. Parker? Here. Veneer? Ogala? Here. We have a quorum and we also have two books in attendance. Thank you for her. Then we have a quorum with him. Okay, first thing on our agenda today is the uh, approval of minutes from our public health and safety meeting on so September 1st. Second. Moved by Ferry, second by um, Parker. Any changes, corrections, additions, anything? All right, great. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion of uh, passes. Okay. Next thing we have is our Sunny Hill um, nursing home updates. And um, <coughs> our usual packet that we get all the time from the nursing home tells us of all the activities that's going on. <clears throat> but I did ask Karen to highlight something that's going on. So Karen, could you come up? Sure. And, so and welcome back, Cotter. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. <laughs> um, in your packet, which is Sunny Hill Updates, is a national, oh, thank you, is a national uh, article that we were featured in in the McKnight's magazine. It is a national health care uh, magazine. All the nursing homes and the and the hospitals and doctors' offices they all get that. And um, they called out the blue because they had heard that we were moving into private rooms and being a county facility, they wanted to figure out how that was possible because, of course, county facilities, um, any of them that I know of, it, and especially in the state of Illinois, the mission is always the same: is to provide highest quality of care to all the constituents of the county and um, no matter what your payer source is and so how do you do that when uh, you know you're trying to hold on a business line so we talked to them and uh, um, and actually uh, they even called Judy mm -hmm. and you're, you're quoted in the article also and so it's, it's, a, it's a really nice article so if you get a chance to, to read through the packet please do um, but it's, and actually, what's really nice about this is other nursing home administrators have seen this and I'm getting calls. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and including one from Menard County's nursing home asking wow. how to do this. Yeah, so, hey, I know, I should do that. <laughs> that's a good idea, Mark. <laughs> Definitely. So, um, I want to thank everybody because it, it, it is a team effort to get this done. I mean, this has been 13 long years. Uh, renovation and I know that we still have some work to do with the, some maintenance issues that we discussed at, at the uh, capital improvements. So oh right. Yes right. absolutely with the flooring and things like that but you so know the renovation will be done very very soon. Um, Sixth Avenue will be, will be completed by the beginning of the year and, and everybody's all excited and the residents are over the moon that they're going to have their own private space if they wish for it and uh, they may have to share a bathroom but that's okay. Yeah, so they're happy with it. They're, everyone's used to sharing bathrooms at home. Exactly. Since, since forever. But not exactly. bedrooms always. Hmm? College too. College too. You have to share. Yeah, a lot of you share in the bathroom in college. <laughs> That's right. So I just wanted to, to bring that to your attention. So thank you so much. All right, great, Karen. We, we appreciate all that you guys do there. I know that it's a, it's a difficult task working with uh, the elderly and the all different stages of life and then dealing with, dealing with all of their family members and everybody so you guys do a great job thank you thank you, thank you very much okay next we have old business is if any anyone have any old business they like to come up mark you don't like to let me old business mm -hmm. okay no new, uh, no other old business so we are moving on to our new business and that is amendments to the Will County Food Service and Retail Food Store Sanitation. Sue and Elizabeth, come on up. Can you bring another chair? Oh, Mike, Mike will scoot. Sure. Mike can scoot over here if you want to. We've got plenty of room. I partner behind. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, we have uh, found ourselves in a, a need to uh, revise one of our ordinances yet again. Um, our food sanitation and uh, food tip, retail food store ordinance uh, needs to be revised because the state of Illinois has repealed um, most parts of their state code and we adopt by reference the state food code. 
So um, the state is moving in the direction of um, the FDA code, but that won't be enacted and, and won't be trained on and won't be used until sometime in 2018. Hmm. Yet they repealed last Already. June, yes, their food code. So we have to have a mechanism, obviously, for enforcement. And so if the, the most of the state food code is no longer in effect, then that kind of leaves us without most of the enforcement that we need. And we don't want to be in that kind of a position. So what we've done, um, uh, we've kind of copied what uh, Skokie Health Department did. Uh, they kind of got right on the bandwagon and adopted um, their own food service code and took parts and excerpts of the state code that were not repealed, incorporated into their ordinance and now they have a, a different kind of uh, city ordinance. And so basically, uh, Elizabeth has done that with our county food ordinance, and uh, she can go through it, and if there are certain sections that you have questions on, she can certainly answer those questions. But um, we need to have you know, a, a lawful document, we need to have uh, an ordinance, a code that works for us, so that we have proper enforcement, and so that's why we've taken the steps we have. Want to go through any sections that would work? Sure. Right. There's only two pages, I think, where we actually made any changes. So we followed what Stokey <coughs> did, and we, of course, had this reviewed by the state's attorney's office. So the entire food service code for the state was in effect um, on June 28, 2016. And June 29, 2016, most of it, as Sue said, was repealed and replaced with the FDA food code chapters one through seven. However, the state has not rolled out the food code to anyone. They have not provided the inspection form or anything. So since we are not enforcing the FDA food code chapters one through seven, we, as Sue said, we felt that we were in a very vulnerable state and we needed to have something in place. So we followed the exact way that Skokie did it. And basically, we change the reference instead of just saying that we adopt the food service sanitation code, that we adopt the food service sanitation code that was in effect on June 28th. Okay. So it's on page three, and then it's again on page four. That is the only change. We are going to have to update our code probably within the next year anyway, once you know the state moves forward with the FDA food code and we move forward with it. So at that point, we're gonna to have to revamp basically the entire code, rethink fees and everything. So we did not do any of that at this point. We just needed to build a bridge basically to get us from now to when that occurs. So that's the only reason um, why we just did these two changes on page three and four. So basically the change just is to add Title 77, Chapter 1, Part 750, of the Illinois Administrative Code as it was in effect on June 28, 2016, Correct. issued by the Illinois Department of Health. That's it. Correct. That's the only change. Yeah. So that we have enforcement. Okay. That's perfect. Go ahead, Mike. So if if we're going to go to the FDA code and we know what the FDA code is, why aren't we writing that now? Because the we we adopt what the state basically puts out, so they're still working on it. They haven't released to us their version of either the inspection form or anything. Oh, okay. They There's haven't provided all the training yet. <coughs> They've been trying to get out around the state and train. The FDA food code is very voluminous. It's a lot different than the code that's currently in place. So there's going to be some ramping up that needs to be done. Our sanitarians, they have to learn all the different citations. They'll have different forms. Um, they don't allow certain things that the state allows now. So there's going to be a lot coming down from the state that we're still waiting on. So those forms will all be state forms. It's just a code that they'll be following in FDA, but the state will still have their own forms and stuff to fill out. So that's what we have to wait. Correct. Well, and to. the state can adopt sections of the FDA food code, but they also want to keep sections of their current code so that they still, if they've allowed certain things in the past, they want to keep them in there. And we so, don't know what that's going to be at right. this point. So we're, we can't just adopt by reference the FDA code and think that we're going to be okay. Right. Additionally, I hate to say it, but you know, the state of Illinois, our experience with them historically has been that things tend to take a little bit longer <laughs> than they you know, sometimes anticipate. And 
Um, you know, they say 2018, it could be 2019. Honestly, they could decide at some point to just change their mind and not go down that route. It is an extremely different approach. It's in some cases a different mindset on some things. Um, so who, who knows what the end result will be. So we need to um, put ourselves in a position that protects our program and um, provides us the enforcement that we need. And the direction in the in the, the, the program itself. Um, a food code gets away from SOAR, you won't be able to do SOAR anymore. Did you pass, fail? So there's a lot of changes that will occur. And we do have representation on, uh, there's a committee that's working on this process. And there was a 10 month gap between last not, uh, meeting before, they just had one recently, but before that there was 10 months when they had no meeting. So, that's, we're just waiting to follow their lead because I don't want to make a change and then they don't make the change right. or they make some different change. So. Right. Does it, it doesn't seem, to me it would seem better to have kept what they had until they're ready to be fully rolled out and have everything in place. <coughs> so that, yeah, I do think that. I, I don't even understand, I don't understand how it can be so different down there than the way we think up here. I just, I don't understand that, so. But anyway, it's, it's, say, yeah, go ahead. It's a little confusing. Anyway, because you're saying that they repealed what they had, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Now the FDA has their code. So right. that have they, has Illinois formally adopted that? Yes. Yeah, so right. But they I haven't know. promulgated like any regulation or any Correct. forms, as you call it, of how they're going to implement that. Right. Correct. So that's right. where your problem is. Right. Or the training. Right. And then right. guys, I that understand. happens frequently. But <coughs> this is a huge gap of time. What, now you adopted, or you kind of copied Skokie's approach. What are other counties doing? Um, other counties are still having their state's attorney review it because when you, when you actually speak to Illinois Department of Public Health, and they issued a memo on August 30th, even though everything took place on June 29th. We got the memo on August 30th letting us know that the sections were repealed. And they basically, and I, I tried to actually even talk to them. I don't understand their train of thought, and I really didn't. I explained it to Keith at the state's attorney. They're like, you're fine. You know, you guys can just keep doing your code. There's no problem. I, I just couldn't get an understanding from them why did they say that. So I apologize. I called them. We spoke with them. Yeah. Our legal counsel indicated that we, we needed to do this as yeah. well, as the Skokies did, et cetera. So the other have to explain this to the rest of the board next week so they all understand yeah. what's happening here because there's just a few of us here right and the rest of the board's going to wonder why we're going in this direction unless they receive it you know what the explanation right. we've got today. and we're going to we were going to continue enforcing the state code anyway right even though unfortunately it was repealed well, because we have no other guidance. We have to have some ordinance. We have, yes. I mean, we have our right. ordinance, but basically it's at right. fees and it's at the hearing. You know, the meat of the ordinance <coughs> is the state, and all the sections are no longer valid. So, and we d are not ready to implement the food. And, and you talk to any other counties, what are they? Yeah, yeah well, that's what. They're in the process of doing what we're they're doing. They're in the process of reviewing it, have their state's attorney review it. Yeah. They're in agreement with having to do it the same way, but they're going through their formal process. <coughs> we're always in agreement We try to do it. Now, DuPage is already at, they're already, they've been implementing the FDA food code for a couple of years. Oh. So, they... How do they do that if they don't have the forms? No, they made up their own. Oh. So, I mean... So, in other words, they, they were more, their ordinance was more strict than the, the state mm -hmm. law that was in effect at the time. They just did it on their own. Correct. And you can do, I mean, you can go more stringent. So they adopted the FDA food code a couple of years ago. Okay, so probably a good idea for them to, to tell them with the county board. When you have your public hearing review, if you're oh. passing this November 1st, you'd like to, we can have a public hearing the county board, and then you guys come up and explain during the public hearing. Okay. That sounds good. good. Have the public hearing here? No, 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 it'll have to be in county board if you want November 1st. In two weeks. Because the date in the packet's in November 1st. We need to do it as quickly as we can. Oh. 
probably do. Yeah, that would be fine. So if you're available on time more to come and speak <coughs> during Judy's committee, please. Because we'll just have, if there's any, um, we'll have public hearing right, yeah. right at committee, and then you guys could speak. Mm -hmm. Speak before the public would have comment, right? Or no, during after? Your, during your it, right and it is timely because we are in the process of um, preparing to bill for our food service establishments, and we want to make sure that we have a document that we can enforce all parts and the fees are one part. So we need to make sure we have a, a document enforced. So we just need a motion to place it on the county board and hold the public hearing. Okay, can I have a motion to place it on the county mm -hmm. board? Motion, second. Moved by Barry, second by Gould. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we will have you guys have a public hearing at County Board, and then Elizabeth, you, you and Sue can come up and uh, give us an explanation of that. Okay, I, I don't understand why the state would do something like that, leave everybody just hanging, and then... State of Illinois. State of Illinois. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Illinois, right. Right, her. Illinois. Illinois. I it annoys us. Susan, did you get it? That's why we call it eel annoyed. <laughs> annoyed. <laughs> oh, it annoys us. Okay. <laughs> our next thing on our agenda is any other new business? Would anyone like to uh, discuss any other new business? Yeah. We're all good? Okay. okay. We'll move right on to public comment then. And there's anyone from the public or other county board members that would like to speak? Uh, and any. Any members from the public? No, nobody's here? Okay. There are no comments. No. Okay, uh, Chairman's report and announcements? No, but I can tell you we'll be having an update in November. Um, a hero and update. We'll be having that because Anastasia's, Anastasia's gone ahead and mentioned to me many different things that are going on, so we will have that to look forward to coming up in November. Hero and update? Yeah. We'll be doing no that's okay and we were talking um, before the meeting today and I've read lots of things in the paper about all the different things that's going on and something called w18 that's a new type of um, chemical of some sort that they found when they did somebody's autopsy so if people are so there's such a, such a bad situation going on so and the Anastasia will update us on that in November so that's that's my only announcement so you can all look forward to, to that information uh, next month Okay, um, we do not have an executive session, so I'll have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Ferry, second by Parker. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.